All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about the 800 pound gorilla in the blockchain space that no one seems to know about. As I'm reading through this, uh, as I'm finishing this book, Hero Villain Ray or Craig Wright, it's not Craig Wright, it's uh, Satoshi, the man who built Bitcoin, Mark, Mark Eggington. It, it talks in here about the original days of, of a company called Encrypt. And this company was back in 2000 and, oh gosh, it would have been 2000. Uh, it was in the early days where this, where this uh, patent attorney had started up this company and, and he knew Calvin Air and Stephen Matthews and, this, and Craig Wright and they basically had this big run-in uh, over there in, in Canada at, at this time and met at this company called Encrypt's office. Now I thought all along Encrypt was a company related to a different company, this big giant. It's not. And so, but what it appears to have led to is somehow, some way, the creation or the formation of this giant uh, intellectual property company. Now, why should you or anybody else give a crap about personal property rights? Well, think about it. You know, if you own anything, real estate, Bitcoin, anything you own, property rights are essential. Property rights are like the foundation of human rights. It's actually the, uh, the fundamental elements of the First Amendment, the Bill of Rights, right to own property, right to work, First Amendment. U.S. Con in the Declaration of Declaration of Right Bill of Rights in the U.S. Constitution, state rights. I mean, these are these are the fundamental, most important property rights are 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 what are the bedrock of our civilization. And so, this company, this giant eight hundred pound gorilla that no one seems to care or know about, or maybe they don't believe it exists or know it exists, has built a uh, a fortress of some. 1,068 1, issued intellectual property right patents over the blockchain industry and now given away, it's given away its rights to that property at no charge, no cost at all. Anyone can use its intellectual property and all of its patents as long as as it uses and builds on Bitcoin Satoshi Vision BSV. So think about like the, uh, you know, I guess as, as everybody probably like flees and leaves uh, all, well, well, I would say all the quitters who never win because winners never quit, but quitters always quit because they never win. And you're never going to get away your life if you freaking quit, dude. You know, I, I know I'm going to, I'm going to come back to this really quick. I'm like uh, talking about this, uh, intellectual property giant, but I'll just share with you a quick story. And that is, you know, when I was, when I freaking pledged the fraternity, man, I was, I was, a uh, gosh, I pledged as a, as my third year. So I, I transferred my junior college when I left junior college, this is in Sacramento playing baseball, you know, and I, I was like, you know, I got to rush a fraternity. My good friend, John Pearson, who's my dad's dentist, my dentist, his son was like my best friend, his, his son, John Pearson. And he's like, you got to rush, uh, uh, SAE or uh, yeah SAE and they ended up getting kicked off camera so I rushed Delta Chi and he says rush Delta Chi they're they're the best and so I come in thinking they were going to be the best and, and I was going to be the best I, I I had no idea what would happen and how hard it would be like I thought it was just chicks and beer have a good time I'm here to meet people networking make connections it was nothing like that nothing it was hell on earth <laughs> Uh, and, but you know, we started with a big group. We, we started with 20, 20 pledges in the pledge class and we ended up with 10. So 50% of the guys just quit because they're quitters. But the 10 guys who made it, okay, we went through literally hell on earth, but it brought us so strong and so close together. And we had the mentality and I still have the mentality that, that winners never freaking quit and quitters never win. And so as the, you know, I, I eventually as I freaking got initiated, it was just like the most glorious day to finally, finally get through the, the uh, horrendous, you know, times, you know, not just, just the grueling and hard, hard times it was being a pledge and to finally come out on top, knowing that no matter what, I wasn't going to quit, even though I was working full time, 40 hours a week, having a job doing, you know, 15 units in college, knew I was never going to quit no matter what. 
And that's ultimately, you know, where I, while I see all these quitters who never been through that, and I was like, just for me, just like one of the very first steps, I could go for step after step after step, freaking, uh, you know, with all this life experience of how these types of things have happened. But quitters who've never had life experience like that, it's great. Uh, it, it, I laugh, you know, I laugh because, you know, seeing uh, quitters, they, they flee and they burn their bridges, which is sad for, for those people. But, you know, it's sad for the, for the quitters who burn their bridges, um, you know, when they, when they quit. And they flee away from the 800-pound gorilla who, for some reason, you know, is not talked about. And the people who have burned all their bridges, what happens? Somebody like, let's say, you know, left and they, they, they flee this big giant. Uh, because of some fake news or some some news report or just some paid freaking bots, you know you got to think about like Kurt Walker Jr. does a really good job. I think of talking about on Twitter, you're reminding people of like, look guys, there is a well-oiled, calculated machine to take to to spread disinformation about this giant uh, conglomerate, this big giant whale. So just. Be mindful of that. You know, it's it's either paid shills or just just bots. And and I and I get wrapped up in it myself. Um, seeing it, I'm like, oh my gosh. And Kurt will remind me something. He's like, dude, that's that's nothing but a but a bot or a, or a shill. It has that's not even a real account or it's some sort. You know, I'm like, oh my gosh, wow. X is just full of that stuff. Not still. So, anyways, being mindful of that, that quitters never win and winners never quit. There's this big giant 800 pound gorilla in the room, and they're called N Chain. Now. Reggie Middleton, uh, who really he's he's like the disruptor in chief Veritasium. He built Veritasium on, on Ethereum back in that twenty I don't know 2017, 2016. 2016 is when it launched, and he had a he, he you know he did an ICO. He got sued. He's probably the most second most hated man in all of uh, the Bitcoin blockchain crypto space. Of course, Craig Wright being the most, and then the second most would be Reggie Middleton. I would think probably the second most attacked. Yeah, and, and hated of all time, and and he's he's really uh, he's patented his inventions though he's patented all of his his, his inventions around Veritasium really well, and he's now recently coming out and realizing that he's only just a small, uh, you know he's a he's a he's just a tiny little you know a fraction of what this giant monstrosity. Has created and you know to to support Enchain, I freaking dude, they do have. I've I've been to the freaking conferences. I've met with the people. I've met with these. Uh, uh, I met with the <clears throat> what's your name? You know, of course Owen Vaughn is is one. But you know, what's your name? That was. Anyways, I've, I've met with a lot of these people at Enchain, and I and I still do have a challenge uh, uh, over a challenge out there to the lead chief. Uh, the chief guy over there who I met in London, I had a, at a Zoom meeting with him here recently to then to actually bring forward this information to the world. Because I think a lot of people just don't know about the power of what this is doing with this intellectual property and how it's all going to play out. Uh, they're just kind of sitting there, just, you know, quiet little company, developing all this, protecting all the all the pe pro personal property and intellectual property. And, and the giant hasn't even, he's like, basically just chilling you know he's not even considering doing anything not right now but I want to just give people uh, a little bit of a, of a forewarning and a reminder because I was at the uh, Dubai conference and with my, my knowledge in the law and experience in litigation uh, when when the the big you know it was a the keynote speech happened speech happened I'm sitting in the back with some friends Xiaowei Lu of S crypt and a, and a and a bunch of friends in the back and I'm literally laughing out loud and and being a, almost obnoxiously when the keynote speech is happening and the and the key speaker says that he gives the he reveals the whole plan he reveals the plan to everybody to what's going to happen and it was as clear as day uh, you know at the the moment I heard it then and I, it's still just as clear now of how it's going to play out is that he said that uh, you know he's going to basically build Ethereum on Bitcoin. It's going to build Ethereum on Bitcoin. And it was that conference that it, that it actually was announced that it ha had happened, where it was possible with Solidity, with the S-Crypt building the, the language of Solidity on, on Bitcoin with the transpiler. He was going to build, build Ethereum on Bitcoin. 
He was going to give it away to not to not uh, you know affect the little guys. And if Ethereum just wanted to continue out and and ignore it, there would come a time that they would pay. And they would pay because he end chain had been issued the smart contract patent prior to Ethereum's <laughs> existence of it. <laughs> so all the smart contracts, the ERC-20 patents, the, these patents that, it, it, that Ethereum claims to have and be operating and doing all these things are all protected allegedly by patent. Now, I'm, I'm not saying one way or the other that they are because it has to be determined by a court. I'm saying allegedly. Allegedly, they're protected by patent. But that's been the that's been the the long game ever since that conference, and now here we are. Uh, the Satoshi trial's over. The guy's not Satoshi according to the trial court. There's going to be appeal coming out here relatively soon. As soon as the the ruling comes out from Judge uh, Miller, the final thing, then there's going to be an appeal in 21 days. Mark my word, that appeal is going to go back, and this case is going to freaking go back. It's going to go back. There's too many errors in the case. You know, the Madden report shouldn't have got in, and they've got major interference that nobody's talking about with Edgar Hansen. They've got a judgment against Edgar Hansen in another case, which is going to be called interference foul. They remember the game Capture the Flag, where they, or any, any flag football game where, the, where somebody throws the yellow flag, it's like foul. <laughs> foul. Everything stops, dude. Timeout. That's got to go back, baby. We got a foul on the field. Well, here we go. We got Edgar Hansen. There's a judgment now. Foul. Foul in the courtroom. He screwed up that case. That's got to go back. Oops. Edgar Hansen. Sorry, buddy. You know, God bless you. But no, that, that's, the, that's the whole, that's why that case is going to go back. Nobody wants to talk about it, but I will be happy to. Nobody wants to, wants to acknowledge that there's a, a, literally a judgment. It's already well settled. That case is over. Edgar Hansen created a foul. All right. So now that's going to go back on appeal. More likely than not, that's my prediction. And it will change everything. But, you know, it's it's important not to wait for that. And I, so I don't want to get people hope. I hate doing this because it's like, oh, hope, hope, hope. Screw hope. We don't need hope. I'm just saying how it's going to be um, and how I'm seeing it play out. But ultimately, it's, these, it's this intellectual property, big giant fortress protecting this, this, uh, this blockchain. And not even, it's the beautiful thing about it is it's adding so much value because... You know, you don't, no one's going to get sued by Enchain and the intellectual property. That's the beautiful thing. You know you're not going to get sued. You know you're not going to be in any sort of patent infringement as long as you use Bitcoin SV. And what a value add that is to uh, industry. Because industry, institutions, large and small companies, and even regular people who are building businesses, well, I know in, in this industry, in the blockchain industry, for whatever reason, technology companies don't, they don't bother doing research first to make sure they're not stepping on other people's intellectual property before building businesses. It's just not done. But in this particular, uh, you know, industry now, people are going to, people are getting that root, beginning to get that root awakening. Now, Reggie Middleton being one that, of giving it to them, but the big one's coming because if they don't come and, and start building and adapting they got notice. They had notice at the 21, 2021 conference in Dubai. And now, I mean, it's ignorance of the law is no excuse. Because you're a company built and you built things in the space and you're violating intellectual property rights, well, you're going to have to pay. So, but there'll be terms of settlement saying, listen, you don't have to pay, but just move your stuff over to Bitcoin SV. That's all it is. All right. So, what a value add that this 800 pound gorilla has done. I mean, one of the, I mean, I'd say it's probably the biggest value add of the entire industry. No other blockchain has even come close uh, wrapping my head around like how big that is in the value add. It's like, does Ethereum have any patents? Does Bitcoin have any, does BTC Bitcoin have any patents? Does, does Doge or these other things, that, do they? No, I don't, I'm not aware of anything like that. But by just using you know, by just using Bitcoin SV, you know that you're protected and you're not in patent infringement. So there is a huge, uh, there's a massive value out of this. And I just want to drive the point home. So do your research, check out the 800 pound gorilla. This is Gav Mail. Like, comment, subscribe, share the video. I'm going to do a space tomorrow.
Be sure to check that out, and I'll see you at the top.